setting fire to four outbuildings near his home and to a neighbor's car. The fires happened on Nana's Lane on Wednesday morning. The buildings and the car were destroyed. King is due in court on Monday. A man from Eddington was arrested after a domestic violence call led to a standoff with police. Amelia Samaru held officers up for several hours at his home on Cluleyville Road early yesterday. He's charged with threatening with a dangerous weapon and creating a police standoff. Samaru's bail is set at $5,000. His court date is June 2nd. Some COVID-19 patients in New York will now be housed at a tennis center in the city. The Billie Jean King National Tennis Center has hosted the U.S. Open Grand Slam tournament, but now it will hold 450 beds, including 20 stations specifically for ICU patients. As of now, nearly 150 beds have been set up, with more being set up in the next day or two. The coronavirus pandemic led to a dramatic drop in crime in Peru. Peru's president says violent crime is down by 84% as a result of the nationwide coronavirus lockdown. 140,000 police officers patrol the streets enforcing the strict quarantine. And that's your morning rush, and that brings us to 513. All right, despite big unemployment totals, many people say they still are having some issues getting their claims filed. We'll take a closer look at the challenges that Mainers are facing coming up in just a little bit. And we know you guys have been enjoying our moments of Zen each morning. Well, a viewer sent me this one, so we wanted to share with the entire class. This is Village on the Green at Sugarloaf yesterday. Our viewer, Winter Green, which is a pretty appropriate name, got this pretty cool video for us. Anytime you can have some snowfall and dogs, it's a win. Thanks for sending in the video. We'll be right back. Well, I mean, it might have been aesthetically pleasing to see some of that wet, heavy snow falling out of the sky, but man, did it do some damage, right, Cher? Yeah, Lee, you're, uh, you're right. I didn't realize if you were, if Sharon was going to say something <laughs> there or not, so my apologies. I didn't hear okay. his last couple of words, so I was a little confused there. <laughs> um, yeah, destructive snow. I mean, it was beautiful. It was aesthetically pleasing for a while last evening, but man, it caused a lot of problems. 
uh, webcam from Lewiston, which picked up around seven, eight inches. It does show some lights on, but a lot of the surrounding area has not uh, has lost power. And I think when we see sun up and get some daylight, you know, the, the, the landscape is going to be a solid coat of white. Sangerville, as Mike Slifer just told us a little while ago, uh, seems to be one of the higher amounts, 14 and a half inches from Piscataquis County. There's Auburn, eight, Bangor, six, Camden, five and a half, and Greater Portland even got snow out of this. Got to be honest, I didn't think the snow would get all the way down into the city and even south of it, uh, but it did. Thankfully, there wasn't enough for power outages, but just north of the city, there are power outages throughout most of the state. And we still have some heavy snow bands that are kind of just rotating and sitting in place. I'll show you one right here. This one's in the Lewis and Auburn to Augusta region. It's moving up through Augusta right now, and you can see some heavy snow right there. Visibility reduced. It's coming down at a good clip. Litchfield, Winthrop, Windsor as well. Eastern Maine, we still have some heavy snow in the city, but mostly north and east of the city as you go up the river through Orono and through Glenburn, and then on up into southern Piscataquis County and central Penobscot County. It's still really cranking away. Now, we are going to see lingering flakes here for a while with these intense snow bands working their way northbound. So give yourself a couple of hours before you head out. It's still slippery, slushy, snow covered. Roads are not great. You've got to do some cleanup in your driveway anyway. So just take it easy for a little bit. It's going to be really heavy. You know, do it in stages if you can. By the middle of the day, improvements, yes, but still not great. We'll have a few passing showers, both of rain and snow, with the accumulation done, though, by then. The winds, however, are going to start to pick up, and that's going to, you know, kind of complicate the cleanup effort and also the effort to restore power. You know, with the winds blowing around and still some heavy snow kind of clinging to these limbs, we could have some additional outages or, you know, just slowing the process. By late in the day, the final flakes, they're out of here. We'll see some partial clearing, so some brightening in the evening hours but it's still going to be pretty gusty and chilly too. You know, the snow that you see out there isn't just going to melt away this afternoon. It's going to take a few days. Now over the weekend, much better. Mix of sun and clouds Saturday and Easter Sunday. A little on the cool side, but it'll feel good in the sunshine. Highs near 50. The next storm is organizing to our south on Sunday. Don't worry about this one as far as snow goes. The track is completely different. It's going to our west. It's going to be warm on Monday. It's going to be very wet. That could be a problem, though, especially in northern Maine. You know, with northern Maine, warm, wet scenario, there's still ice on the rivers up there. I think this could be a big ice jam concern and risk for Monday. We'll keep an eye on that. Marine forecast gale warnings are up today. The winds are going to be howling out of the west. The sea's pretty big. So lingering rain and snow showers today. But tomorrow and Sunday, we get better with partly sunny skies. That next storm on Monday is wet, windy, and warm with highs in the 50s. And looks like Tuesday's the pick of the next seven with a mix of sun and clouds and highs close to 60. So again, it will melt, but it's going to take some time through at least most of the weekend and maybe into early next week too. Guys? Oh boy. All right. Thank you, Todd. Tens of thousands of Mainers applied for unemployment last week. The Labor Department says nearly 31,000 people applied for benefits. That's another new record. Adding in the two previous week's totals, more than 76,000 people are out of work. Now, Priscilla Dimitri works in food service and was laid off about a month ago. She says she has yet to get a final answer on whether or not she qualifies for benefits, let alone if she'll be getting any help. Dimitri says uh, that she and others are having a tough time getting through to anyone handling the claims. She says she's worried about what will happen if people who need help don't get it soon. There are people literally out here that can't, they, they don't know if they're going to be able to eat tomorrow and they don't know how to get these resources and they don't know how to talk to people or how to like, can, like how to present themselves in a way to be like, look, I actually really do need help. You're at the mercy of a system that you uh, don't know how to get through to. Now, we spoke with the commissioner of the Department of Labor yesterday about the major backlog that they're facing, and we had her answer a number of your questions surrounding unemployment benefits. You can see that tonight on 207. 
Hope is on the horizon for small business owners who are applying for federal money to help the huge financial hardship that most, if not all, small businesses have been hit by because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So New Center Maine spoke with Senator Susan Collins about the Keeping American Workers Paid and Employed Act, which she co-authored. The legislation includes the Paycheck Protection Program, which offers forgivable loans to small businesses to cover rent, utilities, and most importantly, cost of payroll. Senator Collins says more than 5,000 Maine small businesses have been approved for PPP loans, totaling more than $1 billion. In the bill, money used can send paychecks to employees for eight weeks, even if they have been laid off. New Center Maine, Sean Stackhouse. A few times a year, students in schools will get to participate in a fire drill, but now that they're not in school, do they know what to do about fire safety at home? I'll be talking about how you can help talk to your kids about that coming up. Government-funded coronavirus test sites will not close today as planned, but the president does want to reopen the economy as soon as possible, even without more testing. Tracy Potts has the latest from Washington. Federally funded community test sites will not close today. The government reversed its decision to pull funding, instead giving states the option to take over. We have the best right now the best testing system in the world but there are certain People sections right now. there are certain sections in the country that are in phenomenal shape already president trump wants to reopen the economy sooner rather than later even without widespread coronavirus testing health and financial experts say that's a mistake it's got agencies full of very very bright people who will all basically tell them the same thing don't rush this return President. We all want it to happen as quickly as possible. We all want to avoid a false start. Republicans' effort to provide another $250 billion for small business loans failed when governments insisted on adding money for hospitals and state and local governments. Please, please do not block emergency aid you do not even oppose. Let's negotiate. You want the timing, the amount, and the rest. Uh, we know these are bare minimums that we need. 17 million have now applied for unemployment in three weeks and with phone lines jammed. I've tried at 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m. There's just no getting through. Officials suspect there may be a lot more. Tracy Potts, NBC News. <clears throat> 
still a lot more to come this morning. I'm New Center Maine, Zach Blanchard. Larry Lord, the maintenance worker hailed a hero in that deadly Farmington explosion last year, is coming home after seven months of recovery in Boston. We'll tell you how you can welcome him coming up in the next half hour. He's, uh, he's one courageous guy. Larry Lord, the man named a hero in the deadly Farmington explosion, is finally coming home. Your kids have fire drills at school, but now that they're home, do they know what to do? I'll have what you need to know to talk to your kids about fire safety. And thousands of men are in the dark today. And that damaging spring storm and its snow move out today. The weekend, much better. This is The Morning Report. All uh, right, good morning, everybody. Power outages, obviously the story of the morning, a quarter million people without power right now. We'll get you the latest number. CMP says more than 204,000 people, uh, customers, I'm sorry, are without power. Amera is reporting more than 50,000 outages as well. Obviously, that is a huge, huge number. Good morning, I'm Lee Goldberg. We are glad to have you with us on this Friday morning and Todd, we've got a, another day, mostly of the aftermath of the storm to slog through here, huh? Yeah, we do. Um, we are going to get improvements today, but this storm was destructive and the damage has been done and we've got a lot of cleanup to do, a lot of restoration to do. Over the weekend, I think the weather cooperates quite a bit for that. A first quick look at some snow totals. Mike Slifer's with us this morning. He's got a more in-depth look at that, but just a handful for you. Auburn, Bangor over six inches, Camden five, Greater Portland around three and a half there in Falmouth. We still have some snow bands working through the state with some heavier you know, areas of snow. Right now, right over the Augusta region, moving up through Waterville, and then north and east of Bangor, we still have some heavy snow falling. So we're not out of the woods just yet. But as we go through the morning, these heavier bands will continue to shift to the north and east and eventually into Canada. And while the day gets a little better, it's not great. I mean, we're still mostly cloudy with scattered rain and snow showers through midday. And then this evening, it brightens up a little bit towards sunset and we'll see a little late day sunshine. So steady snow winding down this morning. Most of the accumulation is done, but sprinkles and flurries linger midday. Temps around 40 and it'll be a blustery afternoon and staying cool 
with temperatures only getting into the mid 40s. I mentioned it'll be better over the weekend. I'll have details in a few minutes. But for more on the power outages, let's check in with Chloe Tebow right now. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Todd. Good morning. Yeah, thousands of Mainers across the state are going to be waking up without power today. I'm, as you can see, lucky enough to be one of the people with power still, even though my lights did flicker a few times. And like you were mentioning, those power outages were caused primarily by the wet and heavy snow and some pretty strong wind gusts. So let's go over the numbers right now. Central Maine Power is reporting there are about 1,900 outages affecting more than 204,000 customers. And Amera Maine is reporting there are more than 400 outages affecting more than 51,000 customers. So combined, that means there are more than a quarter of a million Mainers without power in the state right now. And the areas hit hardest by outages actually span most of Maine. For central Maine power, Kennebec, Androscoggin, and Somerset counties appear to have the most combined outages, while for Amera Maine, the hardest hit locations are in Penobscot County, Hancock, and Piscataquis counties. So I spoke to Amara's Judy Long a few minutes ago, and she told me that crews are working really hard to get those power lines back up. But one problem they're experiencing is that the storm is still moving through some parts of Maine. So there really isn't a definitive timeline as to when power will be restored. But she said their team is aware that most Mainers are under stay at home orders right now. And so they want to help them get their power back on as quickly as possible. We really know that our customers are sheltering at home right now. Uh, a lot of people have full refrigerators and full freezers, and they don't want to lose that to a power outage. Uh, we're very sensitive to that. We have a full restoration effort planned, and our crews are observing safety protocols as well. Now, updates are provided about every 10 to 15 minutes, so we will keep updating those numbers for you on air and online. For now, live at home, Chloe Thibault, New Center, Maine. Meantime, we have some really great news on this Friday morning. Today, Larry Lord, the man hailed a hero in the deadly explosion at the Leap Incorporated building in Farmington, is returning home today. Zach Blanchard has been following this. He's live now. And Zach, quite a welcome expected, right? Yeah, Sharon, that's for sure. This morning, Lord is expected to be released from Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital in Boston and taken by police escort to his home in Jay, a homecoming months in the making. Today, Larry Lord is coming home, seven months after an explosion that changed this small Maine community forever. He's my hero. Longtime Farmington firefighter and selectman Steve Bunker says it was Lord's selflessness that saved lives. It could have been. Uh, even far more tragic had he not taken the uh, an initiative to uh, get people removed from uh, from his building. Lord and five firefighters were seriously injured and Captain Michael Bell was killed. A reality Bunker says the town may never fully heal from. From you know, moments when we were running on adrenaline that morning to dragging out over months wondering if the story would ever would ever conclude. So time has gone quickly. I, I can only imagine for uh, for Larry and his family what these many months have been from him. After nearly 29 weeks in a Boston hospital miraculously recovering from his injuries, he still has a ways to go. His wife Sandy saying in a statement, we are so happy and grateful to be able to bring Larry home to continue his healing. While the doctors told us that Larry still faces a long and difficult road, we are thrilled that he will be home with us so we can support him every step of the way. And so will his community. Like all the injured firefighters before him, Lord will get the full honors. Today, a hero is coming home. You say he's one courageous guy. So for those of you planning to show your support today, here's the route that's expected to be taken. So he's, uh, Lord is expected again to be released um, from Spalding Rehab Center in Boston at 11 o'clock, then cross the main state line around noon. The procession will begin on the top of Mile Hill in New Sharon around 2 o'clock and go through downtown Farmington to the Lord's home on Franklin Road in Jay by 3.30. Now, organizers ask that you do stay in your car and continue to practice social distancing. Sharon. I think we might hear some horns honking as that procession makes its way through, Zach.
sure thing, yes. <laughs> All right, thanks for that report. And while a final report on the investigation into the explosion is expected in the coming weeks, propane lines are now officially included in Maine's dig safe laws. Signed by Governor Mills this week, the law came about as a result of that explosion at the Leap Incorporated facility. The blast was caused by a propane leak. Investigators say it started because of a severed gas line when a post was being installed in the ground. An update now on the ongoing rabies issue in the town of Bath. A recent influx of rabid animals there led to 18 fox attacks. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture designed a trapping program to help take care of the problem. Well, here's how it turned out. 24 raccoons and four skunks with rabies were captured and euthanized. Three wandering cats also ended up in the mix but were immediately given back to their owners. Another 26 animals were captured and released. The goal of the program was to reduce the number of species that may carry rabies. That program ended on March 30th. We are going to take the snow totals town by town coming up right after the break. Stay tuned to see who got the most snow so far. Yeah, and Mike, there's still snow falling, so hold off from any cleanup early on this morning. The day does get better, but it's going to turn blustery this afternoon and some lingering rain and snow showers throughout the day. Better weather for the weekend with more sunshine expected. I'll be back in a couple of minutes with those details. Stay with us. All right, last night's storm, lots of snow, lots of wind. Mike Slifer joins us now to kind of give us a look at what happened. And I guess as Todd just mentioned, hey, in some cases it's still happening. Good morning, Mike. That's right, Lee. We've still got some uh, snow falling out there right now. So these totals are going to change as we get a little bit later into the morning. We will see, of course, more data get released as people wake up and begin to take measurements. But so far, it looks like Rockwood is the winner at 16 inches. Sangerville coming in at 14 and a half, Stetson at 14, Orono at 9.2. We've got a few eights out there um, as well. Topsom coming in right now at about eight inches and a whole lot of seven inch reports out there. So 
The thing with this is that we will start to see more, especially coming out of Arista County uh, as the snow bands are moving on through. And the other piece of this storm, of course, that we talked about was the wind. Wind gusts at all of the weather stations across Maine have been in the 25 to 35 mile an hour range with maybe just a couple of gusts a little bit higher than that. So the good news, of course, there is that a lot of uh, the wind has stayed below that threshold that we tend to look for for damaging wind gusts. Of course, we are still dealing with a lot when it comes to the heavy wet snow that's fallen out there, but uh, thankfully we're not adding insult to injury. I do expect wind gusts to maybe pick up a little bit later on today though as we filter in some of that colder air. So stick with us through the rest of the morning. We will have more updated totals here. And as we get the latest data from the National Weather Service, I will be updating that over on our website, newcentermain.com. So if you miss your town here, check there. Reporting from my home, I'm meteorologist Mike Slifer, New Center, Maine. Some well-known restaurant chains are trying to adapt to life during this whole pandemic. Subway and Panera Bread, for example, are selling some groceries as housebound consumers eat fewer meals from restaurants. Panera customers are able to order breads, bagels, dairy products, and fresh produce. Subway's beta program allows customers to buy online items such as baked bread, deli meats, sliced cheese, vegetables, and soup. And curbside pickup orders can be ready in about an hour at some locations. All right, how about our stump bar? Which one of these sub making chains has been in business the longest? Subway, Quiznos, Firehouse Subs, or Jersey Mike's? Your answer after the break. <laughs> That's a stumper for sure. And of course, we are looking at the snow that has come down in portions of interior Maine. Also, power is out. I'm meteorologist Mallory Brook, live in Norway. We'll have an update right after the break. All right, before we get to the full forecast with Todd, we're going to check in with Mallory Brook in the mountains in Norway to be specific. And Mallory, as a longtime Maine resident, a meteorologist and a ski buff, <laughs> this probably doesn't even surprise you, does it? No, you know, last year, I remember it was right before April break that I had some of my best ski days up at Sunday River. So not surprising, a little bit of a bummer. We can't enjoy it, at least at the ski areas, but a beautiful time to walk um, because there's 
that, that's all you can really do. Power is out here in portions of Norway and at my house. So I have my car helping me uh, light things up in my own studio lights. So that's what <laughs> we're doing this morning and make up by, uh, by flashlight. We did pick up, I, it, it compacted a lot. So it was really hard to tell the official measurement out here, but we did pick up just about, I'd say four to five inches, but it kept melting and compacting. And so it was hard to measure, but, uh, we kept having to sweep off the, 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 um, the bushes that we have because we took off our covers. And so it was very heavy, very wet. We lost power here at about nine o'clock last night. So we do still have some flurries that are falling in the area right now. The wind is rather calm here at this point in time. So we're not seeing any major wind gusts, but nonetheless, uh, the damage has been done to, to the power at this point. And I'm sure that there'll be some trouble trying to restore that in the wind today. But of course, we are looking at an April snow, not a nor not quite abnormal, but uh, at this point in the year, I think we're all ready for some of those summertime feels rather than the wintertime feels. We'll send it to you, Todd. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you there, Mallory, and I'm sure we're on a huge delay, so I'd love to catch up with you. We'll have to do it at another time. Great to have you with us this morning. Thanks for the pictures. It is beautiful there in the Oxford Hills. And when you look at some of the webcams across the state, now that we're starting to see some light on the horizon, it is a beautiful scene. The problem is it's a destructive one. A lot of power out, although you see some lights there in the city, Lewiston and Auburn. A lot of the surrounding area is without power. Heavy wet snow. Sangerville in Piscataquis County, 14 and a half inches. Auburn, Bangor, over a half a foot. Camden, about a half a foot. And even the greater Portland area, I gotta be honest, I did not expect to see accumulation in Portland. And we've got a couple of wet inches of snow, which will melt away in southern Maine today. But throughout the rest of the state, it's not going to get warm enough and there's not going to be enough sunshine to get rid of all the snow that's fallen. We still have some areas of heavier snow falling as these bands are holding together pretty well early this morning. I'll show you one of them right now. You've got to go to a little north and east of Lewiston Auburn. So the snow has wound down in Lewiston Auburn, but it's still coming down pretty good right now through our capital district, the Augusta area, and now migrating up towards Waterville too. So that section of 95 is not good, the turnpike there. We also have another area of heavy snow that's pivoting to the north and east of Bangor right now as you go up the river through Glenburn still seeing some heavy snow and that's moving up through central Penobscot County and eventually into southern Aroostook County too. So these bands will be working to the north lingering flakes this morning and just give it a couple of hours until the daylight starts to get a little brighter and starts to melt a little bit because right now it's slippery. It's really slushy, snow covered. Roads aren't great. We get to the middle of the day. It'll improve. No more accumulation at this point with milder temperatures, but there's still going to be a few passing rain and snow showers. The final flakes come down this afternoon and this evening we'll get some partial clearing. So I do, do think it brightens up. But the wind is going to be a problem this afternoon, gusting over 30 miles per hour. And that's really going to hamper quite a bit of the restoration efforts, you know, from CMP and Amera, Maine. With winds continuing to gust, it's going to complicate things. Now, over the weekend, still kind of gusty tomorrow out of the northwest, but a lot brighter with a mix of sunshine and clouds. And Easter Sunday looks real good right now, too. Another storm forms to our south on Sunday. Don't worry, the track of this one is going to our west. That means it's going to be warm. It's going to be very wet, no snow. It is going to be windy again, though. And on top of that, I think we'll probably have issues with ice jam flooding up north, especially where we still have ice on our rivers. That's a bad combination and recipe for ice jam. So we'll have to keep an eye on that on Monday. There's the marine forecast. Gale warnings are up. The seas are still pretty large. Winds are going to howl out of the west today. Over the weekend, a mix of sun and clouds tomorrow. Still a little breezy. Easter Sunday, partly sunny, dry with high temperatures around 50. Monday, we get drenched, probably around an inch of rain. We'll watch the rivers again. Tuesday looks like the best day of the next seven with temperatures between 55 and 60 degrees, guys. All right, that near 60 sounds really good. Let's take a look at our stumper again. It certainly does. <laughs> we asked which of these sub making chains has been in business the longest Subway, Quiznos, Firehouse Subs or Jersey Mike's? 
Uh, Todd, you want to go first? I will go first. Let's see. I I think it's Subway. I think they were, you know, wait, back in the 50s or something. I don't know. But I'm going with Subway. I think they were battled around the longest. I feel like Subway... Started in Connecticut, I believe, like it, Milford. It seems like the obvious answer, and they're most prevalent in this area, but something is telling me that's not the answer, and I don't know why. Not to go against the birthday boy, but I'm going to say Firehouse Subs. Lee, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, I actually think I know this. When I was in college, I had a buddy who lived in Jersey, and he told me I needed to go to Jersey Mike's, and I somehow remember seeing some sign about how long it's been around. So oh. I'm going with Jersey Mike's. And the answer is, you got it, Lee. That's right. Jersey yeah, Mike's. Yeah, Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> It started as Mike's Subs in 1956. The first store was located on Point Pleasant, New Jersey, on the Jersey Shore, hence the name. And should have known I should have gone to you for the wow. answer, Lee, on a sub shop, for heaven's sakes. What was right. I thinking? <laughs> you could have helped us all out. <laughs> uh. Just a few minutes, we'll be talking about how you can talk to your kids about fire safety. They normally get to do that at school with fire drills, but now that's not an option. I'll have what you need to know coming up. Remain Sean Stackhouse with your main minute. Did you know that schools are required to hold fire drills multiple times a year? Well, now that classes are being held remotely, it's a great chance for parents to talk to their children about fire safety at home. Now, firefighters that I spoke with say it's important to check your smoke alarms. Also, create a plan for possible ways to safety and also find a meeting spot outside of the home for the family to go to. Now, these are things firefighters talk about with kids at school, but right now that's not an option. That's one of the first introductions that they get to fire safety. And now that we're not having that opportunity with some of these younger children, uh, I do think it's important that the parents be able to bring that to their kids while they're at home and maybe include it as part of their, part of their distance learning. And we've collected some great resources for parents to help talk to their children. You can find those links on our website and mobile app. I'm New Center Maine, Sean Stackhouse with your main minute.
We wanted to let you know that News Center Maine is now sending out a daily newsletter to those of you who want to take part in this, our loyal viewers. We're looking for some fun pictures to feature in our newsletter as well. So if you could text us a shot of your new stay-at-home co-workers or buddies, write to 828-6622 like Rue. That's Clay and Lindsay's stay-at-home buddy. Look at Rue. And if you're not signed up for our break time newsletter yet, send us a text to that same number, 828-6622, just the word break in it, and you'll get a link sent right to you for you to sign up. Break time serves up a fresh take on the day of your schedule. You'll get the latest news updates, weather reports, and video of the day delivered right to your inbox. Look at that. Technology at its finest. All right, much more to come this morning. Our first look at your weather. Today's top stories is just ahead as our next half hour begins right now. Still ahead, a hero's homecoming. Larry Lord, the man who's credited with saving lives in that deadly Farmington explosion, is finally coming home. A damaging spring storm continues to drop snow when it finally moves out and what's in store for the weekend. And thousands of Mainers will wake up without power this morning. I'll have the updated numbers. Heavy wet snow blanketed parts of Maine as our spring snowstorm moved on through. We will break down the totals by town this morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lee Goldberg. Welcome to Friday. For a lot of people, not starting the way they had hoped, Sharon, a lot of people without power right now. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the numbers before we get to the forecast. Right now, Central Maine Power is still dealing with more than 200,000 outages. Amira, Maine, with almost 52,000 outages, and all because of the heavy, wet snow and also some wind. So, Todd, where do we stand now weather-wise? Yeah, so destructive this storm. Terrible timing, too. The storm is starting to weaken, though, even though we still have some bands of heavy snow. It'll be moving on out of here. We'll get improvements during the afternoon. A quick little list for you, though. Mike Slifer's with us this morning. He's got a more in-depth list. He'll be with us in the next few minutes. Sangerville, Piscataquis County, seems to be the hardest hit area. The central highlands of Maine, there are like 15 to 20 inches of snow in that area. Auburn, Bangor, over a half a foot. Camden, 5.5. Falmouth, the greater Portland area. Got to be honest, I didn't think we'd have accumulation in Portland. We got a couple of slushy inches. So there are the snow bands still rotating through. There's one sitting right over the Capital District, Augusta right now, up to Waterville too. That little stretch of the turnpike, not good with some heavy snow coming down on 95. We get up to Bangor and points to the north and east. You still see some heavy snow there too, especially north and east of Bangor. Now through the morning, these snow bands will continue to rotate north into New Brunswick. And while it gets a little better during the day, we're still gonna have a few passing rain or snow showers. No more accumulation though. This afternoon tries to brighten up at times it is unfortunately going to be windy this afternoon, and that'll probably hamper the restoration efforts as far as power outages go. Steady snow winding down this morning. Sprinkles and flurries linger. Then the wind picks up midday, and it'll be windy and chilly this afternoon and evening, even though it brightens a little. Temps only in the 40s. Much better over the weekend. I'll be back in about 15 minutes to go over that. First, let's check in with Chloe Tebow, though. She has got more on the uh, power outages and what's going on there. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Todd. Good morning. Yeah, thousands of Mainers are going to wake up this morning without power. I was almost one of them. I've been working since about 4 o'clock this morning. Power flickered a couple of times, but I still have it. That being said, though, crews are hard at work to make sure they can restore power to the area. So let's go over some numbers now. Central Maine Power is reporting there are about 1,900 outages, and that's affecting almost 202,000 customers. Amera Maine is reporting there are more than 440 outages affecting almost 52,000 customers. So combined, that means there are more than a quarter of a million Mainers without power in the state. And the areas hit hardest by outages actually span most of Maine. For central Maine power, Kennebec, Androscoggin, and Somerset counties appear to have the most combined outages. And you can actually see this is a video right now of crews working this morning in Waterville to get that power.
power back up as fast as they can. For Ameramane, the hardest hit locations are in Penobscot, Hancock, and Piscataquis counties. And I spoke to Ameramane's Judy Long. She told me crews are working hard to get power lines back up as quickly as they can, but storms this late in the season can make for pretty difficult conditions. The spring storm, because it brought such a wet, heavy snow, has put a lot of weight on trees and branches, which come down on power lines. That, coupled with the fact that the ground is no longer frozen, and so the trees are not as sturdy as the ground, has made for very difficult conditions that we're facing today. Now, since the storm is still moving through some parts of Maine as well, that's also making for some tough conditions. But crews are reassuring Mainers they do understand how badly Mainers need their power back up, especially since most of us are stuck at home because of the coronavirus pandemic. So in a tweet, Central Maine Power said that its storm response team is working to ensure damaged equipment is made safe and power is restored as quickly and safely as possible. Now, updates are provided online every 10 to 15 minutes so we'll be providing you updates on here and online as well for now live at home chloe tebow new center maine all right chloe thank you very much big day exciting day if you will larry lord is coming home the man hailed a hero at the deadly explosion at the leap inc, leap inc. building in farmington finally getting to return back to his state, Zach Blanchard, with us now with more on this. And Zach, uh, certainly a well-deserved, huge welcome is planned for him, right? Yeah, Lee, that's for sure. After seven months this morning, of he, uh, Larry Lord is uh, returning home to Maine after recovering in Boston, and there's set to be an entire police escort for him. As you might remember, Lord and five firefighters were seriously injured in September when a propane leak caused that massive explosion at the Leap Inc. building in Farmington. Captain Michael Bell was killed, but Lord is credited for getting people out of the building just in time. His family telling us, well, it's good news he's coming home. He has had a long and difficult road ahead. For the community, though, today is a sign of hope. For those uh, who lost a family member, those who are who are injured, to the members of the of the Leap community trying to put their organization together and keep running, this is a a, a poignant culmination to that one individual that we've all been focused on and praying for to finally come home today. That So if you're planning to show your support today, the escort is expected to leave Spalding Rehab Center in Boston at 11 o'clock, then cross the main state line around noon. The procession will begin on the top of Mile Hill in New Sharon around 2 o'clock and go through downtown Farmington to the Lord's home on Franklin Road in Jay by 3.30 this afternoon. You can catch a lot more details and stream it live on our website and mobile app. Live at home this morning, Zach Blanchard, New Center, Maine. <music> Now to the latest on the coronavirus situation in Maine. Two more people have died in the state, bringing the total number of deaths from COVID-19 here in Maine to 16. The total number of cases also is going up still with now 560 confirmed cases. 13 of those are at Tall Pines in Belfast, a facility that includes a nursing home. The Maine CDC says 10 patients and three staff members have tested positive. Throughout Maine, 105 people have been hospitalized at some point during their illness. Of the confirmed cases, 202 people have recovered. More than 11,000 people have tested negative. If we can help our small employers continue to pay their employees, then we'll avoid severing the link between them and we'll avoid a lot of them being without benefits. Small business owners who are applying for federal money to help with financial hardships caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Senator Susan Collins, who just heard, co-authored the Keeping American Workers Paid and Employed Act. It includes the Paycheck Protection Program, which offers forgivable loans to small businesses to help cover rent, utilities, and payroll costs. Senator Collins says more than 5,000 Maine small businesses have been approved for PPP loans. That adds up to more than $1 billion. She says anybody who applied on opening day can expect payment as early as next week. 
First official snowfall report of 20 inches. We will break down some more of the town by town reports coming up right after this. Yeah, some mind blowing numbers coming in from this particular storm and it's still snowing in several spots. Hold off a few hours before you get out there to do some cleanup. Even this afternoon, there'll still be a few passing sprinkles or flurries. The wind will be picking up this afternoon too with temps in the 40s. Hang in there. This weekend looks better. I'm back in a few minutes with a look at that. All right, so there was snow last night, but Mike, before the break, did I hear you correctly? Somebody got 20 plus inches of snow. Please tell me Mike's life for that's not true. That is truly, some of these numbers are just mind blowing. I've been watching these reports come in. I can't even keep up with them. We're getting so many of them now, but uh, Wellington in Piscataquis County, 20 inches of snow, Rockwood at 16 inches, Sangerville at 14 and a half inches. And the interesting thing about this list is you'll notice that all of these reports are over a foot. So there have definitely been some rather impressive uh, reports coming in. We've had reports in the double digits in the Bangor area uh, near Brewer, Hamden. Uh, if we head a little bit farther south, 13 and a half inches at Bowdoin, and that was actually Zach Blanchard's uh, aunt who sent that report in. And so we've been keeping an eye on these numbers. Again, I do just want to caution that uh, the other graphic that I have here isn't quite as up to date right now just because I haven't been able to keep up with some of these reports coming in. Um, but overall, it's just been impressive to see how many people are waking up to double digit totals. And I think that goes to explain a lot of the power issues. When you have this heavy, wet snow and it piles up like that, it can really cause some issues. And again, you heard Todd say it, it will be a bit gusty later on today. So that could have an impact on power restoration times. But I've got an updated list over on our website, newcentermain.com. So check there too. And of course, we will continue to keep you updated right here. Reporting from home, meteorologist Mike Slifer, New Center Maine. All right, thank you, Mike. So the city of Bath has been trying to get a handle on its rabies problem for quite a while, especially after that series of fox attacks. We'll have an update on the effort coming up. All right, it is still snowing in many communities this morning. While the snow tapers off this afternoon, there'll still be a few flakes around, even into the afternoon and evening. The weekend's looking a lot better, though. I'll be back in a couple of minutes with more.
All right, before we get back to take a look at the weather with Todd, uh, the numbers are going down a little bit. We were at a quarter million earlier, just under that now. Um, actually, no, basically about the same. <laughs> Merrimain, 53,000. Uh, 650 outages right now, CMP 198,806. So still a pretty significant amount of our state uh, with lacking power on this Friday, April 10th, which you know has kind of put a damper on Weather Boy's birthday because we can't even really be <laughs> yeah. too happy because a quarter of the state can't celebrate with us. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, if it's if, if it's anything like my refrigerator, everyone who just lost power has got a fridge that's full of food right now. And there are so many. I fear that this is going to kind of last into the weekend. It could be kind of lengthy. Here's some good news, though. It's snow that knocked us out of power. So in a worst case scenario, if you have to, you can use that snow as you know a way to cool some of the food and keep it you know, fresh and not spoil. So there's that, I guess. All right, here's a webcam from Lewiston. Um, you can have some little daylight now and you can just see the landscape. It looks beautiful, but boy, was that snow so destructive. You know, Mike Slifer just went over a snow list and it looks like the Central Highlands got slammed. 15 to about 20 inches. There's Sangerville around 15. You know, Auburn and Bangor over a half a foot. Lots of power outages in the area. Camden five and a half and I didn't think we'd see accumulation in the greater Portland area and we did thankfully it didn't get over five or six inches there really weren't many outages in the greater Portland area south most of them exist for the rest of the state but a big swath of the state is without power this morning we still have snow falling there are two very lively bands right now that don't seem to want to go away Here's one of them sitting right over our capital of Augusta and then on up into the Waterville area, too. We're getting some heavy snow. So that little stretch of 95, not good right now. And then if you look to the north and east of Bangor, you know, about an hour ago, this was right over Bangor. Now it's over Glenburn and on up to the north and east into central Penobscot and parts of Aroostook County. So these bands will continue to weaken and fall apart and move to the north, but there are still some flakes out there. And I'd give it a couple of hours before you head out and start doing uh, some cleanup and, and do it in stages too. This snow is so heavy. Midday, it gets a little better. The accumulation at least is over, uh, but there'll still be some passing rain and snow showers. And the problem with this afternoon, it's gonna get really gusty. Winds are going to be blowing out of the northwest at times going over 30 miles per hour. And I think that slows the restoration effort for CMP and Amera Maine to really tackle this huge task and job that they've got to do over the next couple of days. I think the weather cooperates this weekend. Tomorrow, still a little breezy, but brighter. We'll get a lot of melting tomorrow. We'll also get some melting on Sunday, too. Easter Sunday looks warm in the low 50s, and we'll get some sunshine. The next storm takes an entirely different track. It's going to our west. That means it's going to be warm and it's going to be wet. It will present us with problems, though. I think we're going to have some ice jam issues, especially in our northern rivers that are still covered in ice. Warm temperatures, rain, and melting snow, that's a bad combo. We're going to have to keep an eye out for our rivers next week. Here's the marine forecast. Gale warnings are up. The winds are going to howl. The seas are large right now. So there's a look at your seven day. You know, today's still kind of unsettled, but this weekend looks really nice. Partly sunny both Saturday and Sunday with highs near 50. And again, that next storm will be wet and not white. Guys. All right, thanks Todd. Now here's your morning rush in 90 seconds or less. A man is charged with arson in the town of Monson. The fires happened at 20 and 22 Nana's Lane Wednesday morning. Quinton King is charged with setting fire to four outbuildings near his home and also a neighbor's car. The buildings in the car were both destroyed. He is expected to be in court on Monday. 24 raccoons and four skunks, all with rabies, had to be euthanized in Bath as part of a program to control the population of rabid animals there. A recent influx of rabid animals has led to 18 fox attacks. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture designed a trapping program as one way to lessen the problem. Another 26 animals were captured and released. The program ended on March 30th. A record number of Mainers applied for unemployment last week. Again, the Labor Department says nearly 31,000 people applied for benefits, adding in to the two-week previous totals 
with a grand total of 76,000 people out of work in Maine. If you're in need of help immediately, you can call 211 to learn about other resources because there's a bottleneck on the unemployment benefits. Across the country, more than 16 million people have filed for unemployment in the past three weeks. Cities across the country are shining blue lights in support of health care workers. It's part of the blue light campaign where cities and businesses show support and gratitude for those essential workers. And as you can see, many cities lit up in blue. All right, there's your morning rush in 90 seconds or less. For more on these stories, you can check out our website or mobile app. Good morning, I'm Don Carrigan in the kitchen. Springtime storm means in a lot of parts of the mid coast, a morning for flashlights and generators. We'll be right back with that. And it may seem a little ironic to talk about this during a snowstorm, but it's a great time to talk to your kids about fire safety. They normally get to do that with fire drills at school, but now that's not an option. I'll have what you need to know to talk to your children to help keep them safe. All right, we've been keeping a track of the snow and the power outages all morning, and we are honored to be joined by the original, the inventor, if you will, of broadcasting from home. Don Kerrigan, you've been broadcasting from home forever while the rest <laughs> of us are trying to figure this out. You've always been ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one way in my lifetime that I've been ahead of the curve, Lee. Thanks very much. You know, I was just thinking, after, with everything that we're all going through right now, this, for a lot of us, is something that is familiar territory. Springtime snows, taking down trees, bring, putting out power. Uh, we're on generator this morning. A lot of people, about half of Lincoln County, where I am, is out a little over half. In fact, about a third of Knox County, third of Sagadahawk. So a lot of power outages along the coast, talking to the sheriff's departments. Uh, lots of uh, trees and wires down, branches down. We've got some pictures. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to show them yet that I took just outside here. This snow came really quickly yesterday afternoon, started around 5 by 7.30. I think we had three inches and uh, had already brought down some pretty good-sized branches. That just shows you how impressively heavy this wet spring snow can be, and it doesn't take that much of it to really cause problems. Uh, power lines are... Uh, are down low. So uh, we, uh, I, Todd had mentioned about wind, so obviously we're worried about that. A little melting would be a good thing right now. Uh, no traffic problems because we're not supposed to be out driving anyway. 
Bath Iron Works, for those who are still going there, is still open this morning. Uh, we checked the roads. It was a little slippery, so you're not supposed to go out anyway, but if you do, take it easy. We're going to have to make a run for gasoline for the generator. But uh, other than that, it's going to be a day, we hope just a day, of generator, and uh, we're lucky enough to have one. No power, so hang in there. And uh, remember, we know how to handle this. I'm Don Carrigan in the kitchen. In the dark, sort of. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Don. Still a lot more to come this morning, including some good news on this snowy Friday. Larry Lord, the maintenance worker, hailed a hero, and the deadly Farmington explosion is finally coming home. We'll tell you how you can welcome him next. All right, can we just say you guys totally rock. A huge thank you to everyone who donated to our Maine United Telethon yesterday. More than 3,000 of you picked up the phone or got online and made a contribution. And listen to this, together we raised $633,566. We also want to thank our parent company Tegna for giving a foundation grant for this and to our other uh, sponsoring partners CMP, Poland Spring and Bangor Savings Bank for matching donations throughout different parts of the day. This money will go directly to Mainers who have been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. You guys, your generosity is just amazing. It really exemplifies Mainers helping Mainers once again. You showed up big. And we've got a first look at your weather in today's top stories just ahead as our final half hour of the morning begins right now. He's, uh, he's one courageous guy. Larry Lord, the man named a hero in the deadly Farmington explosion, is finally coming home. Your kids have fire drills at school, but now that they're home, do they know what to do? I'll have what you need to know to talk to your kids about fire safety. And thousands of Mainers are waking up in the dark today. And that damaging spring storm and its snow move out today. The weekend, much better. This is The Morning Report. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sharon Rose Vaznis. And I'm Lee Goldberg. This Friday is a messy one with a lot of cleanup and a lot of power outages, Sharon. A lot of people in our state, almost 25%, don't have power right now. 
Yeah, they're the numbers right now, and they, you know, they keep fluctuating a little bit. They'll tick up a little bit, tick back down. Again, the crews are out there working, but hard to keep up. And Todd is here to show us why. Yeah, this was a destructive storm, really heavy wet snow and quite a bit of it. Usually the threshold for outages with wet snow is right around five or six inches. And that's what we saw through a good portion of the state. Sangerville in the central highlands got slammed the worst, 15 to about 20 inches. Bangor, Lewiston, Auburn, even down into the Portland area, there was several inches of snow that piled up. And it is still snowing in several spots. There's a couple of bands that just don't want to quit. Here is one of them sitting right over Augusta, moving up toward Waterville. Some pretty heavy snow on that section of 95. And as we keep going east and north, you can see that there's another band just north and east of Bangor, although there's still some snow falling in the Queen City. The worst of it is up to the north and east through southern Aroostook County, parts of Washington County and central Penobscot County. Now, these heavy bands will begin to weaken and shift up into New Brunswick. With that said, it's not like it's going to be an awesome day. It's going to stay mostly cloudy and midday will still have some passing rain and snow showers, but the accumulation will be over. This afternoon, all snow showers come to an end. This evening brightens up. But it is going to be blustery, and my fear is that that's going to hamper the cleanup efforts quite a bit. CMP, Amera, Maine, they've got a big task, a big job in front of them over these next few days. Steady snow winds down this morning. Sprinkles and flurries, though, linger midday, and the wind will be a big issue this afternoon, although it'll brighten up a little bit. We'll see temps in the low to mid-40s. For more on the power outages, let's check in with Chloe Tebow. She's live in eastern Maine this morning. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Todd. Good morning. Yeah, we've been talking about it all morning today, the fact that thousands of Mainers will be waking up today without power. My power flickered a couple of times this morning, but I never lost it, which I'm thankful for. Um, but let's go over some numbers now. So Central Maine Power is reporting there are more than 1,900 outages, which is affecting almost 199,000 customers. And Amera Maine is reporting there are about 450 outages, affecting more than 53,000 customers customers. So combined, that means there are about a quarter of a million Mainers without power in our state right now. And the outages actually span most of the state. For central Maine power, Kennebec, Androscoggin, and Somerset counties appear to have the most combined outages. This is a video of CMP crews hard at work this morning trying to restore power in Waterville. And in a tweet, CMP said its storm response team is working to ensure damaged equipment is made safe and power is restored as quickly and safely as possible. Now, I spoke to Amera Maine's Judy Long, who said her crews are working really hard to make sure they can restore power as soon as they can to Mainers. Now, something that's making it kind of difficult is the fact that this storm is still moving through some parts of Maine. But that being said, Judy Long says that her crews understand the need for Mainers to have their powers restored right now because we're pretty much all staying at home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We really know that our customers are sheltering at home right now. Uh, a lot of people have full refrigerators and full freezers and they don't want to lose that to a power outage. Uh, we're very sensitive to that. We have a full restoration effort planned and our crews are observing safety protocols as well. Now, updates are provided every 10 to 15 minutes, so we will be giving you that latest information on our website and on air throughout the day today. Live at home, Chloe Thibault, New Center, Maine. All right, Chloe, thank you. Larry Lord, the man healed a hero for saving lives at that deadly explosion at the Leap Inc. building in Farmington last uh, fall, is now returning home. Zach Blanchard covering this story for us this morning. Zach, this will certainly be a long-awaited, much-anticipated welcome back. Yeah, Lee, it sure will be. This morning, Lord is set to be released from Spalding Rehab Hospital in Boston and taken by police escort to his home in Jay, a homecoming months in the making. Today, Larry Lord is coming home, seven months after an explosion that changed this small Maine community forever. 
He's my hero. Longtime Farmington firefighter and selectman Steve Bunker says it was Lord's selflessness that saved lives. It could have been uh, far more tragic had he not taken the uh, an initiative to uh, get people removed from uh, from his building. Lord and five firefighters were seriously injured and Captain Michael Bell was killed. A reality Bunker says the town may never fully heal from. From you know, moments when we were running on adrenaline that morning to dragging out over months, wondering if the story would ever would ever conclude. So time has gone quickly. I, I can only imagine for uh, for Larry and his family what these many months have been from him. After nearly 29 weeks in a Boston hospital, miraculously recovering from his injuries, he still has a ways to go. His wife, Sandy, saying in a statement, we are so happy and grateful to be able to bring Larry home to continue his healing. While the doctors told us that Larry still faces a long and difficult road, we are thrilled that he will be home with us so we can support him every step of the way. And so will his community. Like all the injured firefighters before him, Lord will get the full honors. Today, a hero is coming home. You say he's one courageous guy. So for all of those of you planning to turn out and support, here is the planned route they're going to take. Again, Lord is expected to leave Spalding Rehab Hospital in Boston at 11 o'clock this morning, then cross the main state line around noon. From there, they will go to Augusta, and then the procession will begin on the top of Mile Hill in New Sharon around 2 and go through downtown Farmington to the Lord's home on Franklin Road in J by 3.30. Organizers asking that you stay in your cars if you can and continue to practice social distancing. Sharon. All right. Thank you, Zach, very much. While the final report on the investigation into that explosion is expected in the coming weeks, propane lines are now officially included in Maine's dig safe laws. Signed by Governor Mills this week, the law came about as a result of that explosion at the Leap Incorporated facility. That blast was caused by a propane leak. Investigators say it started because of a severed gas line when a post was being installed in the ground. For Maine, Sean Stackhouse. Coming up in just a few minutes, I'll have some helpful tips for parents who may have a good opportunity to talk with their children about fire safety that normally happens in schools during fire drills. But now that's not an option, all of those details. But first, let's check in with Todd for one thing we need to know about today's weather. We still have some snow falling out there, this destructive storm just not quitting. So I'd give it a couple of hours before you start the cleanup process. Mother Nature's not going to help too much today as the winds pick up this afternoon and those temperatures stay on the cool side. We'll get a lot more melting though this weekend. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'll have much more on a nice weekend ahead.
morning, I'm Newsom from Maine's John Stackhouse, and this is your Maine Minute. Did you know that schools in Maine are required to hold fire drills multiple times a year? Well, now that's not an option with schools holding classes remotely. However, it's a great chance for parents to talk to their kids about fire safety at home. Now, fire officials I spoke with say it's always important to check your smoke detectors. Also, create a plan for a possible way to get to safety. Also, find a meeting spot outside of the home for the family to go to. And these are things that firefighters talk about with kids at school, but right now there's not that option. That's one of the first introductions that they get to fire safety. And now that we're not having that opportunity with some of these younger children, uh, I do think it's important that the parents be able to bring that to their kids while they're at home and maybe include it as part of their, part of their distance learning. And we've collected some great resources for you to help teach your, uh, your kids about fire safety at home. You can find that on our website and mobile app. I'm New Center Maine, Sean Stackhouse, and this has been your Maine Minute. So even my cat, Dash, you can see over my shoulder, is confused as to why he's looking out the window in April and seeing snow. I just talked to Dash. I told him Mike's life was going to explain what happened here. Mike, talk to my cat. Hey, Lee, tell uh, your cat that we definitely had some impressive snow totals out there. A little bit of cold air to work with and a big old storm. And this is what we end up with, 20 inches reported in Wellington. So we've had some pretty impressive reports come in. A lot of double digit reports starting to pop up through Piscataquis, Penobscot counties uh, and into Aroostook County. That's where the jackpot is for a lot of those higher totals. And take a look at this list. Every single spot mentioned is above a foot of accumulation. And this was wet, thick, heavy snow. And that's what caused a lot of those power outages that we see this morning. Of course, that's the big issue with a uh, spring snow like this. And if anybody was tuned in at five o'clock, I said something along the lines of, you know, don't mind these relatively low totals because we'll start to see more and more pop in. And now I've got almost two graphics worth of totals over a foot. Hartford, 14 inches. Bowdoin, 13 and a half. Uh, Knox coming in at 11 inches right now, too. And again, these numbers are going to continue to come in as we get a little bit later into the morning here. I have an updated list over on our website, newcentermain.com. So if your town wasn't listed here, you can check there. But uh, we, of course, will continue to keep you updated with this through the day. Reporting from home, I'm New Center Maine's Mike Slifer. Mike check, Mike check. And we'll continue to see these snow showers for a little while longer. But this storm exits, and we do get some sunshine back this weekend. Come on back. I've got a pretty good forecast for Saturday and Sunday coming your way.
All right, there's another look at the totals from CMP and Amera Maine on the number of customers without power this morning. And they're saying it's going to be, you know, slow going, getting everyone back online, although they're sending out crews and working as fast as they can, knowing that a lot of people have stuffed refrigerators and such. So, Todd, what's the outlook weather wise for all this? I mean, I guess the only silver lining here is that there's a lot of snow to help refuse as a refrigerant. You know, if you don't get power for a couple of days, this snow isn't going to melt away today, probably not melt away tomorrow either. So you can actually use some of that snow to kind of pack it around your jug of milk, you know, and keep some of those vegetables fresh and meats fresh too, so that they don't spoil. So there's that, I guess. Have a look at the webcam from Lewiston. You know, it looks beautiful, but man, so destructive. Temp 33 in Lewiston, everything coated in white. A lot of the surrounding area lost power. As Mike Slifer just mentioned to us, the highest amounts came in from the Central Highlands. Sangerville, 14 and a half, but a lot of the towns in the area picked up 15 to 20 inches. Auburn and Bangor, you know, you've got over a half a foot, close to double digits in a few spots. I was pretty surprised to see accumulating snow in the Great Portland area. I really didn't think we'd get it. We got a couple of slushy inches. Thankfully, it wasn't more than five or six. That's usually the threshold when it comes to heavy, wet snow for cracking a limb. So it stayed pretty low in the Portland area. We didn't get many power outages. Most of the outages are north of the city. We still have some pretty potent bands that just don't want to throw in the towel this morning. You can see one sitting right over the capital, Augusta, and pushing up now toward Waterville. So that section of 95 right there, probably not drive on at the moment. The next band I want to show you is mostly north and east of Bangor, although there's still some flakes falling around town. A lot of the action is here, northern Washington into Aroostook County, back to central Penobscot, and in again to the central highlands where we're still getting accumulation. So we'll watch these bands finally kind of throw in the towel after a little bit, but there's still going to be some lingering flakes. And I'd give it a couple of hours. You know, just hang out, drink your coffee this morning before you start to tackle this job of cleanup, and do it in stages because this snow is heavy. Today, while it gets better, it's not going to be great, folks. There are still going to be several passing rain and snow showers around under mostly cloudy skies. And unfortunately, the wind is going to pick up and it's going to be very gusty out of the northwest, over 30 miles per hour this afternoon. And sadly, that's probably going to hamper the restoration efforts for CMP and Amera, Maine. Temperatures, though, won't get that high, 40 to 45. So again, that snow sticks around and you can use that to cool things. Speaking of cool, it'll be that way over the weekend, but it'll get a little sunnier. Tomorrow, mix of sun and clouds. Easter Sunday, partly sunny, both days around 50 degrees. The next storm, don't worry about snow from this one. An entirely different path and track from that storm. It's going to our west. That means warm and it means wet. The problem with that is we could end up with some ice jam flooding. We may end up with an inch of rain from this. Temperatures in the 50s. And very warm temps, it's a lot of melting. That's a recipe for ice jam flooding on the rivers that still have ice, namely up north in Aroostook County. So we're going to have to keep an eye on our rivers next week. Marine forecast, gale warnings are up, still real choppy and gusty winds from the west. So still unsettled today with some rain and snow showers, highs in the mid 40s. But the weekend looks brighter with partly sunny skies Saturday and Sunday near 50 and the next storm wet and not white temps in the mid 50s. Hey, our friend Mallory Brook is with us this morning from the Oxford Hills. How you hanging, Mal? This is a tough time. What's it look like up there? <laughs> Well, at Winter Wonderland up here, Todd, of course, the snow started here about three o'clock yesterday and accumulated quickly, but it was really hard to get accurate measurements because it would condense so much. It's still above freezing here, so it's been melting. We could hear it pitter pattering all night long because we lost power about nine o'clock last night. And of course, still no power here this morning. So uh, we are looking at, if I had to estimate, it probably was about four or five inches because we kept having to come out and wipe the snow off our plants since we'd taken off the coverings. Uh, 
thinking we were mostly done, but obviously not. So there is a fair amount of snow that came down here and you still see a fair amount of snow right along the trees and hanging off the power lines. And of course, that is why so many of us are dealing with those power outages. But temperatures are above freezing. There's still plenty of melting going on on the driveway. I'd say we only have about an inch and a half at this point because the melting has continued throughout much of the overnight hours. But uh, we're going to continue hunkering down and maybe take a nice walk in the snow and hope that the power comes on and saves all our food at this point in time. But we are, we're hanging in there and uh, we'll see those spring-like feels come back eventually. In Norway, meteorologist Mallory Brook, New Center, Maine. Yeah, eventually. Thank you, Mallory. All right, we're right back with five things to know on this Friday morning. All right, five things to know to get your day started. Two more people have died in our state due to the coronavirus, bringing the total number now of deaths from COVID-19 in Maine to 16. The total number of cases in Maine also continues to go up 560 confirmed now. 105 people have been hospitalized at some point during their illness. Of the confirmed cases, 202 people have recovered. More than 11,000 people have tested negative. Number of Mainers applied for unemployment last week. The Labor Department says nearly 31,000 people applied for benefits, adding in the two previous week's totals. More than 76,000 people have applied. Others are still trying. If you're in need of help immediately, you can call 211 to learn about resources that are available to you right in your community. And a lot of Mainers are going to be getting some help thanks to you at home. We can't even thank you enough. More than 3,300 of you, plus some of our other partners, donated to our Maine United Telethon yesterday. Together, we raised an unbelievable amount, $633,516. Unbelievable. Thank you. The Farmington explosion seven months ago is finally returning home today. Lord has been recovering from his injuries at a rehab hospital in Boston. Today, he's set to be discharged around 11 o'clock and taken by police escort to his home in Jay. His family tells us while they are so happy to have him home, he has a long and difficult road to recovery ahead. You can find the details on the procession plan for this afternoon on our website and mobile app. And one more check of those outages. They haven't moved much lately. More than 200,000 for Central Maine Power, more than 53,000 for Amera Maine. You can find updated power outage numbers on our website and mobile app. All right, today's going to stay a little unsettled, folks. We're going to have some lingering rain and snow showers. But as you look at the weekend, it looks a lot better. We'll be back with some sunshine tomorrow and Easter Sunday and temps around 50. So we'll get some melting. And the next storm, guys, will not be white. It is going to be wet, which may cause some problems on our rivers and streams. They're going to be rising on Monday with warmer temperatures, snow melt and rain and some ice jam flooding could be an issue too. So things to keep in mind next week. Once we get rid of this one today, we've got a nice weekend coming our way though. All right, sir, thank you very much. And we couldn't quite let you off the hook because a lot of people know uh, this is my two, two of my children's birthdays today. My actual oldest child is 22. <laughs> and then my adopted child, Todd, it's his birthday as well. Now, since we couldn't be together, we did put the band together for this special tribute to the O Meteorologist One. Aww. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gutner. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? How old? Wait, we might be here a little while. Happy birthday, Todd. Okay. All right, Keith. Seriously, that was weird. Oh my god. <laughs> so I had a tear in my eye because that was so beautiful, and I was so—I mean, that hit me right here. And then there's Carson. I gotta be honest. I'm surprised he wasn't shirtless. You know? know, usually that's how he shows up on his social media, shirtless. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you to all. But when I appreciate he sent me it. that video, when he sent me that video last <laughs> night, I hadn't even hit play yet, and I was already laughing because I just saw the screenshot, and I'm like, of course, <laughs> Keith would do that. Oh so. my god. Anyway. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Well, happy birthday, wow. Todd. At any well, rate. hang in there, guys. Have a good weekend. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I right. appreciate from it. A we'll, good... we'll celebrate at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. From a good laugh to a quick moment of zen. Take care, everyone.